Chemistry lecture number 48, soluble and insoluble ionic compounds. Now before we start this lecture, you need to go to this website and print out chemistry lecture number 48. There are two charts that I want you to use to follow along with this lecture. So this is the first chart that uh, you need to print out so you can follow along with what I'm doing. And then um, this is the second chart from about here on down. And just as a reference, it might be handy to also print out this chart. So go to richardlouis.com and you can uh, get to these charts under chemistry lecture number 48. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Soluble means that more than three grams of a substance can dissolve in 100 mils of water. Uh, insoluble means the substance cannot be dissolved in water, so less than three grams, if only if uh, less than three grams can be dissolved, we consider it to be insoluble. NaCl is soluble in water, and the reason it's soluble is because it breaks apart into positive and negative ions. So <clears throat> if you take salt and put it in water, it breaks apart into sodium ion and chlorine ion. So I have some salt right here, and uh, you can see, yeah, you can sort of see the white powder down there. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'll just, uh, I'm going to pour some water into it, shake it, and then set it aside. There we go. It goes like that. Okay, all right. So if you look, if I shake this up, eventually it'll uh, turn clear and all the salt that's uh, floating around in it uh, will eventually become dissolved. So I'm going to set this aside and let the uh, salt take some time to dissolve and we'll look at it later. Calcium carbonate, on the other hand, is insoluble. Uh, it will not break apart into calcium and carbonate when placed in water. It remains as a precipitate or a solid. <clears throat> so if you take calcium carbonate in solid form, put it in water, nothing happens. It remains as a solid precipitate. Now calcium carbonate is the ingredient in chalk. So I ground up some chalk and I put it uh, in here. And so what we'll do is I'll just add some water to this and shake it up and we'll see what happens. So this stuff is supposed to be insoluble. So here's the uh, calcium carbonate and we'll shake that up. If it's soluble, it'll eventually dissolve and the solution will turn clear. If it's insoluble, uh, it won't dissolve and it'll look all cloudy and mucky. All right, we'll set that aside. <clears throat> now, there are general guidelines we can follow that allow us to predict if an ionic compound is soluble or insoluble in water. And what follows are the solubility rules for commonly used ions. So here are the soluble ions. Nitrate acetate, and there are two ways of writing the acetate ions. This way it shows something about the structure, and this doesn't, uh, but these are essentially equivalent. Um, <clears throat> group 1 elements, hydrogen ion, lithium, sodium, and so on down. <clears throat> now compounds that contain these ions are always soluble. So any ion a compound that has nitrate, always soluble. If it has acetate, always soluble. If it has sodium ion or any of the other group 1 ions, always soluble. Sulfate ion. Sulfate is generally soluble, but it's insoluble when combined with lead, mercury, or silver. And there's a memory trick for remembering the exception to the sulfate solubility rule, PMS. PB for lead, M for mercury, and S for silver. Um, sulfate is also insoluble when combined with calcium, strontium, and barium. And the memory trick is castro bare ca calcium stro strontium bare for uh, barium and i got that uh, off of youtube from a very clever girl uh oh i forgot the name of it but a student thought of it and i didn't but if you can think of better memory tricks i encourage you to use that ammonium uh compounds containing ammonium are always going to be soluble <clears throat> group 17 halogens chloride bromide and iodide Generally soluble, but insoluble when combined with lead, mercury, or silver. And once again, we use the memory trick of PMS, P for lead, P, B, lead, M for mercury, and S for uh, silver. You notice that uh, this list of uh, halogens 
doesn't contain fluorine. So here are the group 17 elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. Acetine is a very rare element. It's radioactive and it has a half-life of eight hours or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so I only include chloride, bromide, and iodide. That's because fluoride in general is not soluble. So these three are the soluble ones, except when combined with lead, mercury, or silver. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> here's a list of the soluble groups, nitrate, acetate, group 1 elements, <clears throat> uh, sulfate, ammonium, and group 17. And if you take the first letter of the soluble uh, groups, they spell out the word NAGSAG. So you can use NAGSAG as a way to remember the uh, names of the soluble groups. Um, sulfate and group 17 uh, ions have exceptions, PMS and or Castro Bear. So you have to memorize that sulfate has the exceptions of PMS and Castro Bear, and group 17 has the exception of uh, PMS. These are the list of the insoluble ions, fluoride, carbonate, hydroxide, oxide, sulfide, and phosphate. So if you see these ions in the compound, it'll be insoluble. <clears throat> now, you do have to remember, however, that all insoluble ions become soluble when combined with group 1 elements. So, for example, aluminum phosphate, since it has phosphate, it's insoluble. But sodium phosphate is soluble because sodium is a group 1 element. And once again, if you take the first letters of the insoluble ions, you can use a memory trick if you use uh, this phrase. Fred's car hits old Sullivan's Porsche. Fluoride, carbonate, hydroxide, oxide, sulfide, phosphate. <clears throat> now these are general guidelines for predicting the solubility of ionic compounds. Um, there are exceptions to the guidelines. For example, according to the guidelines, uh, silver acetate would be soluble. The rule I told you was that acetate was always, always soluble. Well, in reality, silver acetate is only partially uh, soluble in water. Um, you can only get 1.02 grams in 100 mils of water. <clears throat> also, these guidelines are incomplete. Uh, they don't include ions such as chlorate, chromate, or, and perchlorate. And sometimes it's necessary to use a more detailed chart that contains more ions and shows the exceptions to the general guidelines. Um, what follows is a chart that is more detailed than the general guidelines. So this is included in the PDF file of this lecture. So these are the solubility guidelines um, that are more detailed. The way you would use it is you would have the negative ions here and I guess the positive ions here. So <clears throat> silver acetate, so here's acetate down here silver here, if you look, you end up with the letter P, which means partially soluble. And that's what silver acetate actually is, partially soluble. Hey, let's look at uh, our salt solution. Um, see, our salt solution looks clear now. So NaCl is soluble. Oh, looks a little bit, uh, didn't uh, dissolve, <laughs> but it's mostly clear. Okay, that little bit on the bottom here, eventually it will dissolve. And then, the calcium carbonate definitely has not uh, dissolved. All right, so hopefully that illustrates the idea of soluble and insoluble for you. Okay, well, let's uh, do some practice. Let's predict whether uh, the following compounds are soluble or insoluble using the general guidelines for solubility. So let's see, silver nitrate, nitrates are always soluble. So this is gonna be a soluble compound. Sodium acetate, Acetates are always soluble. Na is a group one element. Group one, ele ele <coughs> group one elements are always soluble. So this is a soluble compound. NH4Cl, NH4 is ammonium. Ammonium is always soluble. <coughs> also, chlorides, since they're part of group 17, the halogens are also soluble, except when combined with uh, lead, mercury, and silver but it's not combined with lead, mercury, or silver. So for two reasons, this thing is soluble. OH tends to be insoluble. Um, however, it's attached to an ammonium. And remember, ammonium is always soluble. So this is gonna be soluble. <clears throat> lead sulfate, lead is soluble, except when combined with lead. Remember, PMS, so this is insoluble. 
H2SO4, um, sulfate in general, soluble unless combined with lead, mercury, or silver, but it's not attached to that, so it's soluble. Also, H is a group one element, so group one elements are always going to be soluble when combined with negative ions, so this is soluble. Uh, mercury one chloride. So chlorides tend to be soluble except when combined with mercury. This again is part of PMS, so this is going to be insoluble. Carbonates, insoluble except when combined with group one elements. So cesium is a group one element, so this is going to be soluble. Barium carbonate. Carbonates are insoluble unless combined with a group 1 element. Barium is a group 2 element, so this is insoluble. Silver bromide. Bromide is uh, group 17, so bromide tends to be soluble except when combined with silver. Again, this is part of the PMS uh, exception. Um, silver, uh, when combined with a group 17 element, is going to be insoluble. And last one, calcium bromide. Bromide, um, again, part of group 17, tends to be soluble unless it's combined with PMS, unless it's combined with uh, lead, mercury, or silver. Well, calcium is not lead, mercury, or silver, so this is going to be soluble. Alrighty. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 48, soluble and insoluble ionic compounds.